or SEER, our non-stimulant, thermogenic, and recomposition agent. Corsair is a super cool product because it's gonna help you utilize turning your white adipose tissue, which is for storage of fat, into brown adipose tissue, which is gonna help with energy production. So this is great to use for a competition prep or in your weight loss phase. So you can stack it with a, a stimulant-based thermogenic, or you could also use it in your off-season or muscle building phase to help keep you lean and mean. Corsair. Guys, I got a special guest today. This is Gabe Rangel, who is our champion of our eight-week summer sculpt challenge. How are you doing today, Gabe? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good. I gotta be honest. I don't think it was that close. You know, a lot of these, you know, when we come to the judging, picking out the winners, second place, third place, like we it's pretty grueling and we go back and forth. We have a lot of conversations. Your transformation for the eight weeks was pretty, pretty dramatic. So Talk to me a little bit about what was the total, like, what was the total weight loss in that time? Total weight loss was, I started at 172 and a half on my before picture and my after picture after the eight weeks, I was at 141.6. So a little short of 31 pounds. Listen, I'm not going to pretend like that's not extreme. That's not something that I would actually suggest a client of mine do. That seems pretty dramatic, but I'm guessing there had to be a pretty large shift in your behavior that facilitated like a big change, obviously, in body composition. Definitely. I mean, everything was everything was a switch. It was with the flip of a switch from counting calories to keeping track of macros or step count. Everything was was tracked um, strategically. I, I felt like, you know, on a daily basis, there was a few times that you know, I went I went above and beyond trying to either get more steps in or trying to get a little bit more cardio in. But yeah, everything was was on it for on a daily basis so it also appears you know and this is the illusion of losing body fat that you you put on a little bit of muscle were you already like in the gym pretty consistently before this challenge yeah that's the thing i've been working out consistently for many many years but when you have that fat or if you're if your diet is not on point or if your nutrition is not on point nobody could see it right so that that's what it, that's what it got to for me is is just trying to make sure that you know I was in a little slump since you know COVID and the gyms closed and everything like that. My diet wasn't on point, and now that I'm getting older, I'm in my mid forties now. Uh, I just felt like you know there's time time needs something needs to change within within this time because I have a teenage son as well who was my main motivating factor. He's one he's in sports, he's in wrestling. I didn't do sports when I was younger. I actually started lifting weights as a teenager. That was my main two sport. And, you know, I've, I've consistently done it for over 20 years, but just being able to, you know, transform my body or change my body composition has been challenging this goal on for whatever, what reason. And I'm just going to associate it with age or being middle age, right? Yeah. I mean, I do think we, we, I have, it's like my new favorite phrase that body fat is not stubborn. People are stubborn. And by that, I mean, we just get set in our routines and when someone says to me, well, I want to lose body fat and I go, okay, well, you know, you have to change something. They don't want to change. They want to keep their same routine. And I'm like, well, that's the, that's the stubbornness is like, okay, you have to move more. You have to track your diet, whatever, whatever it is, whatever behavior, if you're going out drinking three nights a week, if you're, you know, it, there's got to be some kind of change. And I think that's, it sounds like you literally flipped the switch. So was this the first time doing a challenge with us? Correct. Never, never did a challenge with you guys before. Uh, previous to this challenge, all I was looking for in this part of my journey was a customized meal plan that had girls pretty much laid out for me so I can eat the same thing over and over, proteins, carbs, fats. I don't mind eating the same thing over and over. Yeah. I actually didn't really meal prep for this challenge. I'm one of those, let me let me put some chicken on the grill, have whatever left over for, you know, three, probably three days was the max. It would never last the whole week. And if I had to feed the family as well, you know, they're not, they weren't eating, you know, super clean like I was, but they would eat the protein, obviously. And some, yep. you know, my son, he's got a fast metabolism. He could eat whatever he wants. And that's what I'm trying to teach him. Is that, look, you're going to, you can eat whatever you want now, but it's not going to benefit you in the future if you continue to eat like that. And it's not going to benefit your physique. And now I see him being a little bit stagnant in the weight room because of his diet. So I actually, uh, this week or actually today, he's starting on a lean bulk and I'm going to put him on a plan. My wife's actually going to do a little a little cut for herself. And I, and I started telling her, why don't you wait till the ninth and get in this challenge? And I was like, no, I have my mind set up for today. 
maybe the next one she'll get in on it. Um, it's just one of those things where you gotta have you have to be mentally prepared to put your body through, you know, some rigorous training and deficit if you're gonna do it. You have to be mentally prepared at least a month in advance, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the idea um, of a deadline is is key because I think a lot of people say I want to lose weight or I want to look better, but unless you put it into a format that actually makes it real, you know, for me doing bodybuilding shows when I was in my 30s kind of flipped that switch for me, you know, same thing that happened to you. It, was, it didn't happen to me until I was 32. I just said, you know what, I'm, I, I got to do something. And, and that deadline for me, now I realize not everybody wants to get on a bodybuilding stage, but these challenges, when we see these remarkable transformations, um, it's, there is a component of this is a short, right? Your focus for that eight weeks, that 12 weeks. Um, so I, I think that's, probably something that's not valued enough when it comes to this journey, because otherwise we just keep doing the same thing. So prior to this, were you kind of eating out more frequently or just, you know, what was your diet like? Yeah, it was more or less. I mean, I'm always, I always watch my protein. My protein has never been something I overlooked, uh, but it was just the carbs and the fats and I never really paid attention to. Yeah. Uh, so not necessarily, not necessarily eating out, we would do that more on the weekends, but if the if the meals are home cooked, we just wouldn't pay attention to or count how many carbs are we eating, how many how much fat are we eating. So obviously, what were your um impact. what what did you set your calories at to start the challenge, and where did they end up? Calories started at nineteen hundred, which is my my maintenance. Uh, according to your your calculator, it said my maintenance was nineteen. My my uh deficit would be, I think fifteen. Yeah. 50 or yeah 1500 okay and uh what is it 15 wait a second i'm trying to remember the numbers now 1900 i mean it's 500 plus or minus my, my maintenance correct yeah but i mean that's if you're just going by calories if you're using you know if you're doing something if you're being more active that mm -hmm. changes the equation too so i was just curious like you said you kind of gave yourself like a meal plan and just ate the same thing do you remember what you set your calories at to start Week yeah, one. it was nineteen hundred the to start for like the first two weeks, and then I noticed that kind of plateaued a little bit on the second week of the challenge. Like instead okay. of losing, um, I was I was approximately losing about two and a half pounds to three pounds a week. That was that was my average. But That's the first week, I, I yeah, the the first week I dropped the most. I dropped about almost ten pounds the first week. I don't know how that happened. I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything extraordinary, but I'm, I'm assuming it had to do with a lot of water weight or a lot of things that. I mean, if you were just eating and, you know, if you're having alcohol and eating things in high in sodium and you just make that, that switch, yeah, there, there will come a little bit of that inflammation off. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's happened to me before. That's not necessarily all body fat, but it is encouraging when you look down at the scale and you see a new number. Yeah, definitely. So that builds momentum and you're like, I want to do more of that, but you're never going to lose 10 pounds in a week. Um, oh, no, no consecutively especially i mean you you weren't in bad shape to begin with you you know you were you were in good shape but you ended in ridiculous shape like you know um so what did your calories get to down because what tends to happen when we do these challenges is we don't care we, what do we got to you know you want you want to start to win you want to start to be mm. competitive so what did your calories end at you know for the final weeks Calories ended at ten times my body weight, which would have been okay. fifteen hundred. I didn't go. I didn't go under fifteen. I, I think one day maybe fourteen seventy, fourteen sixty. But I'm like, yeah, I, I felt it the next day. I was like, man, yeah. Maybe it was mental, men, mental too as well. But I just felt like, you know, this isn't. I don't like how this feels. Fifteen. I was. I was doing fifteen for the last month. It was fine. Did now? Did you? Did you utilize cardio as well? I did. I did. So <laughs> I crunched the numbers for you guys. The the way I, I calculated my my cardio, I don't have a smartwatch or anything like that. So I just use my phone, had it in my pocket, and it's pretty accurate with Samsung Health or whatever app I was using calculating my steps. And it was walking. I did a lot of walking. I'm I'm fortunate enough to be able to go, you know, in the back and, and walk during lunch and stuff. So I'm giving six thousand after that. In the morning, the stationary bike was was my go to for the first five, six weeks before, you know, I had something occur where I couldn't do the stationary bike anymore. I had a little medical scare, but it wasn't it wasn't nothing too severe. But I didn't I didn't associate it with the stationary bike until I was like, hey, I'm having a little pain, you know, on my by my tailbone or by you know the lower area where you squat. You know, you get that pain sometimes from either squatting or deadlifting. I thought that that's what it was from, but then I was like, wait, it might be from riding the stationary bike too much. 
And as soon as I stopped, you know, within a few days or a week, it finally started subsiding. But, you know, stationary bike in the morning, steps at work, more steps after. There's a little more spire house, which I would, would hit for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And then I do one hit session a week, not too many, maybe two in the beginning. And for 15 minutes, walk, run, walk, run for one minute, on, off, on, off. And then sometimes substitute that with the treadmill. So, you know, but for the majority of the time, um, yeah, the total amount of steps I've, I've calculated for the for the eight weeks was a little shy under 900K. So not, not like Dan Devine or not like some of these guys getting 30, 40,000 a day. But my average step count was about 15,000 a day with the stationary bike and, you know, the hit. So I would say movement, movement. Yeah, so when you talk about 15,000 steps a day, what was your average before you started this, would you say? Oh, my average before this was, I, I tried to get to 10K previously, you know, on a, on a regular, probably like in the beginning of the year when I was when I was on this fitness journey with intermittent fasting and trying to find my, my customized meal plan. I was I always heard 10K is a good number to start in. So for this year, 10K before this year, probably 5 to 8K, maybe less. <laughs> Yeah, You know, it, it was a wake up call for me. I remember because I worked from home and, you know, with kids at the house. And I remember one day I tracked my steps and I was at 3000. I'm like, wow, oh, that's yeah. that's with going to the gym. I don't think people yeah. realize how many steps 10,000 is. I mean, that's that's moving for a few hours a day. Um, mm -hmm. Some of us get that through lifestyle. But obviously, when you you combined increasing your activity with all of a sudden restricting your calories, I mean, you saw like uh, an immense change um, over the course of that. What what size did your like waist change from? That was a huge fluctuation, probably the biggest fluctuation uh, probably since I was in high school. My waist started, at, I believe, at 34, 34 and a half. You know, um, stomachs are pretty big and got down all the way to 28. So, so How I'm tall are you? I'm 5'7". I'm not a tall guy. Yeah, yeah so so. 34 sounds small to me because I'm that's <laughs> like you know when I'm tiny my waist is like 31 32 so but yeah I guess if you're five seven that's that's probably you know not the most comfortable as far as like you know tucking your shirts in and stuff yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it is yeah. a good feeling uh it's way more fun to go try on clothes when you're when you're in good shape right like looking at the oh track. yeah definitely I just didn't like being that small because I was like I already have 32s that were kind of loose and I was like wait now they're super loose like I don't want to yeah. go by 28s, you know, because I, I didn't think I was going to to maintain that weight at 140. I didn't, I mean, you know, you look at yourself in the mirror, like, wait a second, I'm real, I'm real small. Like my son's bigger than me, you know, so. So it's been a couple of weeks. How's the, how's the post competition been? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't, I didn't go crazy, crazy uh, off the charts, but I'm not, I'm not calculating as much as i should my my weight increase has been about mm, eight to nine pounds so okay 50 150 range yeah i'm still and the thing is i think you know i took a little break from from weight training just because i've been consistently going at it you know full throttle for almost a whole year and i feel like i don't want to set myself up for injury and i feel like it's always good to just take a little bit of break i've been doing some you know calisthenics i have a pull-up iron arm do some push-ups daily but from the heavyweights, because when I when I go to the gym, I usually lift heavy. You know, in order for me to to maintain my lean muscle mass, I always went to almost failure without, through every workout. So, yeah. knock on wood, I didn't. I've never had any injuries, or surgeries regarding weight training. You know, I've had little ones, but I, my number one rule for anybody that's ever gotten injured from the gym is do not go back into the gym until you are 100 percent fully recovered. That, that's my number one. Right? So that's what I always went back as. You can re-trigger something. You cannot uh, recover yep. fully, and you'll just set yourself back. You know, three to six months or even longer if you need surgery. Yeah, I've, I, it's actually interesting you bring that up because um, there's a guy, Dr. Stuart McGill, who wrote a book on fixing the back, and a lot of people go in and opt for like a back surgery, and he believes that if instead of doing the back surgery, you just do what the recovery is for the back surgery, which is like six months of you know no stress mm -hmm. on your back. You don't need the surgery. It's pretty yeah. interesting because like the recovery from the surgery is so long that if you just did that, you wouldn't actually need to get the surgery sometimes for the, for the, mm -hmm. the discs and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I've always been a big believer of, you know, taking time off versus what's kind of become common as like active recovery, like doing foam rolling and putting icy hot on things and, you know, where you're just almost masking the pain to, to train through it. 
um because i've given myself some pretty bad tendonitis through doing that so i i got no disagreement with that especially if you're feeling good right you said you didn't like mm -hmm. being 140 so if 150 is where you love to to hang out and you, you're happy with your body composition and you got more energy and yeah that's that's wonderful mm -hmm. so i mean obviously you got down that lean did you think about competing because you looked you started to look like a competitor there man yeah i i thought about it but i don't know i, th I think 140 i don't know i don't know if that'd be my ideal weight class i, I feel like if i did compete I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind taking, you know, a year to, to put on some lean muscle mass and yeah. compete at like 155 to 165. That's, that's, have you, um, deal. have you ever been to a show? I have. It was a long time ago. It was probably like, I think around the time that you said you started competing is when I was, you know, contemplating it 15 years ago, but it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I will say this. I was under the impression that I had to be much bigger too until I went to a show and saw that it, that was, that was in my head. The, 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 there's obviously competitors that look amazing and, and have much more muscle than me, but I found that, you know, going to a show, you see much more, you know, physiques that you can kind of compare yourself to much better than what you see on social media or, you know, in magazines back when I was looking at magazines. So that's actually what got me excited to compete was going to a show and going, oh, I can compete with these guys. I don't have to stand next to Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman, right? Um yeah. So I, yeah, I, I think you have like the, you have a very good, like aesthetics shoulder to waist ratio. You have great, you know, your core looks great. I think you would do very well. It's not about what you weigh on stage. It's, it's such an illusion of, you mm -hmm. know, muscle bellies and shape. So um, you just, you have a really good look, obviously losing 30, was it 40 pounds? What were you? No, no, not 40, <laughs> almost 31, <laughs> 31, 31. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. But that, I mean, that's for someone that was in relatively good shape to lose 31 pounds. That's, you know that's a lot of body fat. Like, I don't know if you got your body fat tested, but I, you look to be pretty well below 10% to me. Why do you say I was in good shape? I don't feel like I was in good shape before I started. Well, you just got to understand you're comparing yourself to you and maybe you need to go walk around Walmart. <laughs> I do actually. <laughs> yeah. Go walk around Walmart, go walk around. I mean, I, I just think the average, you know, obesity is much more common now than being in shape. Like, you know, okay. People in shape are the outcasts in in public now. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're the we're the odd ones. You know, people, it's 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 much more acceptable. I don't want to say acceptable, but much more common to see people. So when I say you were in good shape, I just mean like you weren't obese. You weren't like in a position oh, okay. where like your okay. health was at risk. Yeah, yeah. So, right. um, I honestly, you know, a lot of the discussion that, that that I have with people is like, what is your definition of shredded? Someone's like, oh, I want to be shredded, and I'll I'll say, show me a picture. Because in my mind, shredded is when I get on a bodybuilding stage. But some people might look at me right now and be like, oh, you're shredded right now. So it's 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 a very much a it's it's about what you want, what what kind of physique you want to walk around at. Um, and that's what I love about this challenge is I'm not we're not judging who gets the most shredded. We're judging who has the best transformation. Right. Um, some of our, I think one of the gentlemen in our top three only lost eight pounds, but had completely changed his body composition, putting on muscle while losing eight pounds, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you lost 31 pounds. And and Dan, I think, who won our last challenge, he had lost 30 or 40 pounds too. But, but that's not necessarily what the transformation challenge is about because you also changed your body composition so dramatically. Um, were you pretty active in the, uh, in the support groups? Oh, definitely. Uh, I did more engaging throughout the challenge as opposed to posting my personal progress picks. Yeah. I just felt like, I just felt like if I'm putting either strategies or what I'm doing out there, yeah, definitely it might motivate somebody. But at the same time, I don't want to jinx myself. You know, just, it's just my thought process. I just felt like I'm not sure it was out there. And, and plus I noticed that the group was at 800 members and there's definitely like 800 people participating. So there's a lot of people in there. I even shout out. And that's pretty much what took place the last few days. Some people didn't post at all and, and rank top 10, which I thought was interesting because I I kind of like pride had pride in the community. You know, I felt like it was a it was a large motivation for not only myself, but for the people like for the people that did post regularly. Like yeah, I'll give you an example. Ronald P, he was uh he had a, an incredible step count and he actually motivated me to you know, get out there sometimes because I knew I couldn't compete with a step count. But it was just like, I have to get out there. 
and I at least get some steps in today if I felt like, you know, tired, exhausted, not enough energy, or just whatever it was. And it's like, you know, so there wasn't any motivation for us to do that. But I always try to take gain as much as I could. Yeah, my goal is um, so the new challenge is, starts in a couple of weeks. Um, the Facebook group is open and we have all the materials available. So I'd like to get you in the new group. You know, if anything, you can just get in there and just be like, hey, this is Gabe. I won the last one. And, you know, I know, you know, whether it's sharing someone who's having a bad day or a recipe or just like, you know, your mindset, I think um, they're incredibly valuable to have people that have gone through the challenge in there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're interested, we'll, we'll we'll put you in the new group. Yeah, I already reached out to Coach Christina. I think she she added me to the list. So yeah, yeah, not a problem. I definitely wouldn't mind helping anybody out that you know needed that advice, boost of motivation, or whatever I could do to contribute. So so now that the challenge is over, um, you said you're tracking a little bit less, but have you kind of at least established where you'd like your calories to be and your your daily steps to be to kind of maintain? Yeah, I I figured if I can get up to. Uh, Anywhere in between 2,000 and 2,400 in a lean bulk, I would like to start incorporating, um, getting a little bit more lean muscle mass within the next you know, six months. So I can possibly that, I mean, now that you brought it to my attention, I didn't, I didn't know. I appreciate the compliment on, you know, trying to get on stage. That where where do you live? Goal. I live in Illinois, Lake Zurich, uh, you know, not too far from Chicago, 30 miles from Chicago. Yeah, I mean, Illinois doesn't have a ton of competitions. There's actually one. The OCB Midwest States. You should look into that one. That's coming up in November. It's a show that I actually did with Lane Norton back in the day. I mean, 2007, I think I did it. Um, but yeah, there's, if you just go on and type in bodybuilding in Illinois, you'll mm -hmm. find up competitions. You know, it's just a Saturday, but uh, it can be fun. Take your, take your, take your son, show him another sport. Yeah. I'll tell you what, wrestling translates well to bodybuilding because the amount of, training and cardio and you know weight management they do for wrestling i've had a few guys come to me from that background and they are they transition super easy into bodybuilding mm -hmm. no i believe that some of these guys in high school when he was wrestling last season they look like young men in their 20s i was like wow how do these guys get so chilled as teenagers i was like, yep. like flabbergasted but yeah that, that's what wrestling does it's good to be doing in the gym and weight room not much fat on the body when you're when you're burning that many calories yeah and i mean the, it's just the culture of wrestling it's very hardcore because they are always trying to stay under a weight cap so they're trying right. to maximize their strength cut water so it's um it's it's a very demanding sport i think it's probably the closest sport that you can relate to the bodybuilding competition prep where we're you know we're we're trying to get to a low body fat level keep all our muscle um it's not a lot of really things that translate well to that so um so what's next for you man i mean i'm, I'm excited to, to to get you some money hopefully you, you're gonna put it to good use mm -hmm. no definitely yeah so the next step for me is actually um trying to follow in the people's footsteps that are putting out this incredible content to get motiv to get people motivated like myself and you know, feel like if you stay behind the shadows you're really not helping anybody so that's been one of my limiting beliefs, I guess. It's one of my things that I wasn't always, you know, confident in. It's, you know, is my is the things or the tools that I have at my disposal valuable enough for someone else? To live? And, I, and I believe at this point in my life, I've, I've learned a lot within this last year. So I want to start putting the content out so I'm just trying to see what that leads to. Just to you know, help the next person that might be in need. Perfect. Well, we'd love to have you aboard. Um, and then it's the next challenge. And if anything ever comes up, if you ever think about getting on stage, you know who to talk to. I know some oh. things. So, yeah, can, can I, um, can I, can I add one more message? Uh, for sure. For sure. He actually, he actually wanted uh, to say something, he recorded something for, for you and the uh, fans in the group. Hello, my name is Gabe Jr. And I wanted to start by expressing my gratitude to all of this entire team for providing the tools and guidance that have been invaluable to my dad and I throughout this year. About three years ago, I decided to start working out to improve my performance in baseball and wrestling, but I didn't really know where to begin. I was unfamiliar with many exercises, and one way to deal with it was eating a portion of my exercise, and the basics of the game of defense and the concept of exercises. Searching for more information online, I started to find a strong education, and that's why I wanted to be able to change. One of the key lessons I learned during the game was the importance of the 
So proud of him for achieving first place in the first eight week transformation challenge. Another crucial insight I gained is that his number on the scale is amazing. When I first started cutting commitments, I got obsessed with it. However, your advice helped me shift my focus and my confidence in the amount of muscle mass I was gaining. This new perspective helped me to stay disciplined uh, in my approach to fitness. And perhaps the most important lesson I learned was the value of transformers. Whether you're cutting or bulking, Understanding what you're eating is essential to your well-being and change your physique. We start starting with the three dangerous practice and so that team wants me to play a big role in the book of Jessica Fan today. Thank you for the opportunity to share my experience and thank you all for the impactful content you've created. You and your team have been a big major impact since reaching the end of motivating us to share our own journey and help others. I'm excited to see what the future holds. This that was my little man. Yeah, he wanted. He wanted that was amazing. Yeah. So do me, do can you do me a favor because I think it was a little choppy because I think you're on your earphones. Oh, um, okay. Can you actually send that audio file to Christina because what I'll do is I'll put it in the podcast directly instead of having okay. it play through. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can do that. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. I mean, gosh, I don't think there's anything better than inspiring your kids, right? Exactly. Yeah, and I feel like you know putting making making him be part of the team of building content, showing him, you know, transformation, transformation can be done at a young age or just trying to make him with the benefits of the team and her be you know, highly beneficial for just the younger generation. Yeah. So I have a question. Um, I have some pictures of you from the challenge, the before and afters. Okay. If you have any videos that you took, like, you know, when you were a little bit heavier and then mm -hmm. at your most shredded, if you yeah. could send us a couple of those too, because that's stuff that I can use for um, for YouTube and for for Instagram, and I can tag you in all the stuff that we post. Okay, yeah, I can definitely look into the archives. I you know have a lot of footage, like I said. Now, now this thing for me is just learning and editing. That's that's gonna be. Yeah, fun. listen, I I think obviously, whenever we get shredded, we tend to shoot a lot of content. It's when we're a little heavier that we don't shoot as much. So if you have anything mm -hmm. before and after, it'd be great. Um, just to just show off because we are going to be in the next couple of weeks putting out some stuff for our next challenge. So it'd be great to have it. Definitely. We'll do. Awesome, man. Well, congratulations again on, uh, on winning and uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and man, how, how do people reach you? So you mentioned some content. So what's your, uh, what's your social medias that you're using right now? Right now it's, you can find me at the vitality mindset would be the handle. Uh, so that, that would be, on either Instagram or, or YouTube, but there's I don't have anything posted. That's just the handle. So, but I am going to start posting, like I said, with the next few weeks. So that's, that's, Perfect. That's, yeah, definitely. Thanks I'll tell you what, I'll, yeah. I got young kids and uh, YouTube for kids is like street credit, man. My kids think it's great that I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I really, I really agree with them. It's just one of the things where if you're watching it on a regular basis, you get more from YouTube than you get anywhere else. It's like, I call it YouTube University for a reason, right? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's a trend right now with shorter form content. But what, what you know, but we, my video guy, have found out is that while shorter form content is great for entertainment, it's not great for education. So mm -hmm. people that really want to learn are still watching the longer form stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So awesome, man. Well, thanks, Gabe. It was really great talking to you today, and I'm excited about having you in the new group for all the new challengers. Um, and uh, have a great week. Same to you. Thank, thanks to you and all the coaches for, like I said, putting this transformation challenge together and helping out everyone else get, you know, especially for your audience. I appreciate it. No worries. Mm -hmm.